Hi, hello everyone. My name is Vivek. I am a software developer. I make videos about containers, Kubernetes, Go as a programming language, distributed systems, and sometimes about software engineering in general. So if you have been liking the kinds of videos that I make, you should consider subscribing to the channel and you should follow me on Twitter as well. In this particular video, we are going to continue uh, writing the operator that we have been writing in some of the previous videos. Uh, if I try to very quickly summarize the operator that we are going to write, so the name of the operator is cluster, K-L-U-S-T-E-R, and this operator is going to provision Kubernetes clusters on DigitalOcean automatically. So we are going to, or we have already introduced a resource of type cluster, and as soon as a cluster resource is created on, on your local Kubernetes cluster, in our case kind, a respective DigitalOcean cluster would be created on, on your uh, DigitalOcean account. So this is what we are going to achieve as part of this playlist. Uh, a lot of things have already been achieved. So for example, we were already able to register a new, new Kubernetes resource, we were able to generate CRDs and CRs etc. We were also able to write a very basic skeleton of operator where as soon as a particular cluster resource is created we, we would be able to handle add and delete events on, on the cluster resources. So that is what we have already achieved. Uh, in this particular video we are actually going to uh, build or write the code that is going to create cluster on digital ocean. So I have already opened the source code here. If I try to run git status just to make sure that we have not may, made any changes, uh, we, we don't see any changes there. Now if we go to our source file cluster.go, if you see here we have the cluster spec here. So as soon as a particular cluster resource is created on your Kubernetes cluster, we are able to handle the add and delete events. And if you see here in process next item, we are getting the cluster spec of the resource or the spec of the resource that was created. Now, what we have to do is we have to create, we have to call digital ocean APIs to actually spin up a Kubernetes cluster using the specifications or using the spec that have been specified here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is let's, let's just go ahead and try to create a new directory named DigitalOcean. And inside, new that, inside this new directory, I'm going to create a file named DigitalOcean.go. Now, uh, if you are actually writing this, uh, this application, this product uh, that is going to be deployed on production, uh, this is not how you are going to do the things. In that case, maybe you will be creating uh, an abstraction that is going to have some, some behavior and then your providers are actually going to implement those be behaviors. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, if, it was, if it was a production ready code, we would, you would design an interface and this interface is going to have some methods. For example, uh, create cluster, delete cluster, uh, and get cube config maybe. And in after that, these these providers, for example, cloud providers, uh, DigitalOcean is going to implement this interface. Similarly, let's say AKS is going to implement this interface, EKS and, and etc. So this is how you are going to do this uh, if you are writing this code to run on production. But right now we are just trying to understand the concepts of operator. That is the reason I'm just going to uh, simplify it. So let's call it package do and inside package do we are going to have a function uh, that says create and we know that we are going to create Kubernetes cluster, so we, we don't necessarily have to specify create cluster in the name. So if we talk about create, create is actually, create should have access to 
create should have access to the token that we are going to use to authenticate against DigitalOcean APIs. So first of all, let's just go ahead and try to look into the DigitalOcean API to create a Kubernetes cluster. So this is DigitalOcean API reference. If we go to Kubernetes and create a new Kubernetes cluster, and if we, if we go to uh, go examples here if you see here we are initially or we are first of all initializing the client so let's just go ahead and try to do this so import and then we are going to say go to dot new from token and then here we are going to specify the token and then this returns client okay now the thing is how are we going to figure out the token so if you remember uh, from our previous videos uh, what we are doing is when we create a particular cluster we specify a secret that contains the digital ocean token so what we are going to do is this is this is the secret name but if we talk about if we just have the secret name how are we going to get the token out of that secret first of all we will have to query that secret from kubernetes api server and to do that we will have to have the namespace as well so what we are going to do is when when we specify token secret in in cluster spec we are going to specify in the form of namespace slash name so in our case let's say we we have the token in default namespace and name of the name of the token is do secret so what we are going to do now is when we call so first of all we will have to in cluster.go we will have to import this new package that we have introduced so what we are going to do is we are going to say github.com okay and then we are going to say do dot create and we will also have to we will also have to pass the name of the secret so let's let's do that and name of the secret is if we go go ahead and have a look into types.go so if you if you see here cluster spec and for cluster spec we have we have token secret so let's try to do that so cluster dot spec dot token secret okay now what we have to do is now that we have secret name let's let's query kubernetes api server to actually get that secret so that we can get the token from that secret but but before doing that uh, let's go ahead and try to create the secret just to show you how the secret is going to look like so first of all this is my this is my digital ocean token and what we are going to do is we are going to say kubectl create secret and generic we are going to create this in default namespace and we are going to name this do secret because that is the name that we are specifying in cluster resource so do secret and from literal key we know that secret is secret is a kubernetes resource where we can store values in the form of key and value pairs so key is going to be token and value is going to be value is going to be my digital ocean token and let's go ahead and create that now that now that we have created the created the secret if we get the secret here we go so this is what we have to do we have to get the secret that have been specified or that has been specified in cluster resource and then we will have to get the value for 
token key this is what we have to do so let's just go ahead and try to do that so get token and pass the secret name here and it returns let's say token and error token is going to be of type string and error would be error and it expects name okay and we have to pass token here and if error is not equals to nil in that case we are going to return error okay so now from cluster.go we are calling digitalocean.create and digitalocean.create returns an error and before actually creating the cluster we know that we will have to get the token using which we are going to call the DigitalOcean APIs and that is the reason we are doing all these things. Now, what we have to do is, here we will have to call Kubernetes API server, but to call Kubernetes API server, we will have to have Kubernetes client set. So let's go back again uh, to where we are calling do.create form and let's see if we have Kubernetes client set here and if you see we we don't have Kubernetes client set initialized So we have this client set for custom resources, but we don't have a Kubernetes client set So what we are going to do is let's add another field in controller so that we can access it uh, from from other methods as well so We are going to call it client and this is going to be of type Kubernetes dot interface. Okay, and when we call new control controller, we will also expect a client for standard Kubernetes resources, and this is going to be of type Kubernetes dot interface. Here we go. Now we will have to change our main dot go to pass this particular parameter while calling new controller. So here we are calling new controller. So let's just go ahead and try to try to create client set for Kubernetes native resources using the config that we already have. So Let me just go ahead and refer a code. So okay, so Kubernetes dot new for config can be used. And this gets us client and error. So if error is not equals to nil, we are going to log this, but you can do uh, anything that you want to getting standard client and this is the error. And let's go ahead and pass this client to new controller. Okay. So now, now I think we are on in, in a good shape. So in cluster.go we have client set standard client set field in controller so when we call do.create we can also pass c dot client here and this returns an error Okay, here we go.
let's name it C and pass that to get token and get token is now expecting a client of type kubernetes dot interface okay so now that we have kubernetes client set here we can easily call client dot core v1 because we know that secrets are in core group and v1 version so core v1 dot secrets and we also have to figure out namespace so here we are going to specify namespace dot get and for get we have to specify context and the name and obviously uh, meta v1 meta v1 dot get options but before that let's go ahead and try to try to discuss how are we going to specify how are we going to figure out namespace and name so if we go and have a look into this this manifest again we know that we are specifying we are specifying secret with namespace and name so here here we see we have namespace and name excuse me so let's what we have to do is we have to just split this string with slash and then first string is going to be namespace and second is going to be name so it's it's just uh, that simple so this is not actually secret name let's call it secret and in get token what we are going to do is we are going to split secret so strings dot split secret from slash and the first part is going to be namespace so zero s element is going to be namespace and first element is going to be name here we go So we have to just get meta v1 package. All right, so this gets us secret and error if error is not equals to nil in that case return empty string and error but if error is nil it simply means that we got the secret so what we have to return is we have to return if you see here we have to return secret dot data and data value of data is map of string and string so we have to get the value for token so s dot data and we have to we have to return the value for key token this can be a const this can be improved but right now let's just uh, have it this way so now that we have now that we have token and we have initialized the digital ocean client uh, let's just go ahead and actually call DigitalOcean api to create the kubernetes cluster so we are going to refer the official api reference again so to actually call to actually call kubernetes dot create we will have to first create the request and the request is if you see here kubernetes cluster create request so let's do that let's initialize that go to dot kubernetes cluster create request 
or let's do this let's just copy So this should be a reference. So request colon equals to this, and then we are going to call dot Kubernetes. Dot cluster. And this is going to this Kubernetes dot create is going to expect or take request as input and okay so it also expects a context so let's create a new context here and here we go this dot create returns if you see here Kubernetes cluster response and error so cluster response and error so if error is not equals to nil in that case what we want to do is we are going to return error and if there is no error in that case we are going to return we are going to return cluster id and then nil so cluster id is going to be cluster dot id and then we are going to return nil so we will have to change the signature of create method to return string and error so we will have to change these lines because now we return two we return two fields uh, instead of one so this according to me should work now but what we have to do is let's just go ahead in cluster.go and make sure okay so we get cluster id here and let's just print the cluster id so fmt.printf or log.printf cluster id that we have is percentage s and then cluster id so it, it looks like things should work now okay so the problem that i i think that we are going to face is uh, we have not specified reason and version to be correct values so this is what is going to fail first and the, the other thing that i just remembered is we have not actually initialized i mean we have initialized but but with empty values so we'll have to specify values for create request as well if we look into this particular documentation name reason version uh, is required and then node goals so name is going to be Okay, so apart from Kubernetes client set and secret name, uh, if you now see, we will also need the cluster spec here. So for example, if we create this cluster resource with this particular specification, we need this specification in this particular package so that we can create the API, DigitalOcean API with these, uh, these configurations. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So here we will have to pass we will have to pass cluster spec as well or if we just pass cluster spec this would also be a good idea so we are passing cluster spec here and this is going to be of type so if you see here this is going to be of type v1 alpha 1 dot cluster spec
so we know that this is our module name inside module we have to go for package apis vbxing.dev and then v1 alpha 1 so package apis group is vbxing.dev and then version is v1 alpha 1 and that is what is the type of this spec so v1 alpha 1 dot cluster spec okay so and here we have to pass the secret name so we know the secret name is spec dot token secret okay so we are in a good shape here name is going to be spec dot name because we know that we are specifying name to be cluster name now this is redundant we we see here so either i mean i think we can remove this field from crd spec or cr spec and we can create the cluster with the same name as resource name so let's just uh, we are not going to do this now we are going to now as of now we are going to create the cluster with cluster dot spec dot name and apart from name the other required field is reason and version so reason is going to be this version is going to be this so now reason can we can get the reason from spec dot reason and similarly spec dot version okay and we will also have to specify node pools here if you see node pools is also required item so node pools is a slice of type node pool create request and we have to initialize okay and inside node pool we can see what are all the resources what are all the fields that are required so size name and count so size and then name and then count so let's let's say we want to create a kubernetes cluster with 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 three nodes in it so ideally we should get the count as part of this specification so let's just go ahead and see if we have uh, that yeah so we are getting the count in node pool itself so that that is good what we are going to do now is so let's see three just to just to compile the code i'm going to hard code it to three so now i think we are good the only thing that we have to that we have to now figure out is what are all the supported values for reason version and then for node pools so if we see if we look at the crd we can also specify node pools here and node pools is obviously a slice that has that has count name and size so let's just go ahead and try to do that so node pools node pools is an array and count is let's say three name is going to be let's say dummy node pool and size is going to be now we will have to figure out we will have to figure out what are all the sizes that sizes of this is this size is the size of instance or nodes that are going to be created so we will have to figure out three things here what are all the reasons that are supported version and then size of the node pool so let's see how we can figure those things out so if you see here this looks like a valid size here so let's just go ahead and copy these things so reason is going to be nyc1 version is going to be so this is very stale version i don't think this is going to be supported now so we will have to figure out version manually 
and then let's specify size to be this one okay so yeah uh, if you are not getting something don't worry about it i'm just going to i'm going to uh, summarize this in in a bit so now all we have to figure out is kubernetes version and to do that let's see if there is another api uh, to to do that so retrieve an existing kubernetes cluster update delete delete retrieve qconfig credentials upgrade retrieve user information and here we go list available reasons node sizes and versions of kubernetes so this is this is the api that we can call Okay, so if you see here, these are all the these are the, all the sizes we have already figured out size, so we don't have to worry about that. And these are all the these are all the versions that are supported. So let's say we are going to use this particular version. We we are going to or we want to create Kubernetes cluster with this particular version. So let's just go ahead and try to do that. Now I think we are we are pretty good. So let's just go ahead and try to run this. So go build. And let's see if we have the CRD already created. If we don't have the CRD, we will have to create the CRD. So create hyphen F manifests and then CRD is uh, clusters.yaml. Okay and we have the CRD now. So let's run our operator and create a cluster. So if you see here, let, let, let me open my, my DigitalOcean console. So if we go to Kubernetes, we should not see, if you see here, we don't have any, we don't have any Kubernetes cluster, but as soon as we go ahead and we try to create this manifest, so this cluster resource, a particular cluster with this particular specification should be created on DigitalOcean. So this is what our our, 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 our operator was supposed to do. So qubital create hyphen f manifests and then cluster one. If everything goes as expected, okay, yeah. I think something went wrong because cluster ID is not is not displayed here. But yeah, let's see if we are if we have a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so so obviously something went wrong, and that is the reason we don't see cluster ID created here. So let's go ahead and try to try to debug that. Okay, so we did not print the error here. That might be the problem. I mean, we would at least uh, get to know the error. So printf error percentage s in the cluster. I'm going to delete this cluster resource for now and we are going to build the application again and then we are going to run this. Okay, so yeah, yeah, now we know what exactly the problem is. So it says validation, validation error, worker node pool 
missing name invalid name and then missing side slug and now i remember when we called when we called digital ocean api we did not actually specify size and name and count so this is the problem so what we have to do now is uh, we have to get the size and we know that size is node pools zero dot size so spec dot node pools zero dot size similarly spec dot node pools one dot size and count is also going to be spec dot node pools zero dot count and this should work now if i if i try to explain it i mean this is not very good code i would say so for example if we don't specify node pools here this is going to this is going to break etc so maybe you you will have to write your own logic to validate to validate if the spec has node pools or not similarly if we have more than one node pools in that case all those node pools should be specified as value of this node this node for node pool so all those things are yet to be handled but you you get the idea now i'm going to do the same thing so i'm going to delete i'm going to delete the cluster and build the application once again and then run it Okay, kubectl create hyphen f manifest and cluster one. And here we go. Cluster ID that we have is this. And if I refresh my console again, I should get a Kubernetes cluster here. It obviously is going to take some time. So yeah, here we go. We have a cluster with uh, name cluster zero that we have specified in our spec and we have specified reason to be nyc1 if you see here and we have also specified this particular version that we see here and this is what we this is what we wanted to do now if i just go ahead and if i just go ahead and try to create another another cluster resource i should get another kubernetes cluster created in my in my digital ocean account so let's let's go ahead and try to do that so manifests and we are going to copy cluster one cluster two and let's change cluster two to have let, let's name it one one and we are going to specify let's say count to be four let's keep it three and we know that the secret is in default namespace itself so let's just go ahead and try to create uh, this cluster as well so cluster two and as soon as i hit enter our operator is going to create another cluster on digital ocean with name cluster cluster one so here we go and if i refresh this again we have another cluster be being created so yeah i mean this is what this is what i wanted to talk about in this particular video uh, if i try to summarize the things again so the things that we have done in this particular in this particular video is so in cluster.go we had already written this the source file in cluster.go we already had uh, the cluster spec this cluster spec is the specification using which a particular cluster resource was being created so we already had this cluster spec all we had to do was we had to use this particular cluster spec to create a cluster in digital ocean to do that what we did is we created another source file named digitalocean.go inside do package and we created a create method that expects kubernetes client set and that cluster spec now we need we need this kubernetes client set because we have to we have to actually get the secret name that has been specified in this particular resource we have to get that secret to get the token out of it so that is the reason we need kubernetes client set and we call get token 
and in get token we call kubernetes api to get the secret then we return the token and once we have the token we make a request to we make a request to digital ocean digital ocean api to actually get the cluster created now the things that that we are going to talk about in the next video are about sub resources so for example if i go ahead and try to get the cluster name cluster hyphen zero and hyphen oyaml if you see here we see all the specification but what if we want to so for example if i delete if i delete this particular resource this kubernetes cluster from digital ocean should also uh, get deleted so in that case we will have to specify will we will have to persist cluster id as well somewhere as as part of this resource so that those are those are the things that we are going to uh, talk about so for example if i if i for example run get cluster cluster hyphen zero so the things that we are going to talk about in the next video is how are we going to have cluster id pers being persisted as part of this resource so that when we delete this cluster cluster from digital ocean should already should also be deleted and we are also going to see how we can see an additional column here so for example as soon as we create this resource we see that the cluster is being created in kubernetes but that doesn't necessarily mean that the cluster has been created so initially for a lot uh, 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 for some time this cluster is in is in let's say creating state so we should be able to see the see the state here so for example here we should we should see two more columns maybe or one in one column we should have cluster id in another column we should have uh, if the cluster has been created successfully or not and we are also going to look into status sub resources so these are all the things that we are going to look into in the next video uh, but for now thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you think this is going to be helpful uh, to your friends to your uh, colleagues uh, share it with them and thank you so much for watching